Thanks for joining us. Let's have a look at how to solve systems of equations using an inverse matrix. We're going to do one example each for a 2x2 two two system and a 3x3 three three system. So don't go away. So here's our first example. Example 1a, we have two equations here. What we're going to do is use matrices to solve this and use an inverse matrix somehow. So but before we get started, I've just got to show you one other way we can represent this problem. So there's our set of equations for this problem. What I'm going to do is write that in matrix form. And what I'm going to do is write two by one matrix and another two by one matrix that are equal to each other. Like so, and what I'm going to do is actually put these equations in here. Okay, so on the left is going to be 4x minus 2y equals 2. 4x minus 2y. Remember, that's just one number, not two. And that equals two. So this equals this. And down here I'm going to put minus 3x plus y. Remember again, this is just one number, equaling negative 4. Okay, for two matrices to be equal, they have to be the same size, and the corresponding entries must be equal. This represents those two equations. What we can now do is the matrix on the left can actually be factored into two other matrices. Okay, matrix multiplication backwards. Let me demonstrate. It's going to look like this, a 2x2 two two matrix times a 2x1 matrix, which will give this 2x1 matrix. Okay, and this is just going to copy down over here. So what are the entries going to be? They're going to be this, 4, negative 2, negative 3, 1. And this one's going to be x and y. Does that make sense? Let me explain. This matrix multiplication here, let's do it. This matrix times this matrix. This times this, 4x minus 2y gives 4x minus 2y. And the bottom row, minus 3 times x, this times this, plus this times this gives negative 3x plus y. And what we now have is this matrix equation here. This is called the coefficient matrix, okay, because it's the coefficients of the, of the uh, variables in the original equation. And we call that matrix A. This is called the matrix of variables. We usually call that matrix X. And this is the matrix of constants over here representing these two numbers. We usually call that B. Every system of equation, if we're going to solve it in matrix form, can be written as this matrix equation here. Matrix A times matrix X equals matrix B. And what we are looking for is this matrix X here. Once we find matrix X, we know what X and Y are. So how do we solve this equation? What we do is we multiply both sides on the left by the inverse of matrix A, like so. Because then what happens is the inverse of matrix A times matrix A gives the identity matrix by definition. And on the right we're still left with A minus 1, B. And the identity matrix times the matrix X just equals the matrix X by the identity matrix definition. So to solve the system, our solution is this. Okay, We find the inverse of matrix A, multiply it to matrix B, and that tells us what the variables are. Okay, Because remember that matrix X there is just made up of X and Y. So if we know what this is, we're going to know what X equals, we know what Y equals, and we've solved the system. Okay, so make sure you understand this before you move on. Take another look at it. Take your time. Now back to example 1A, and let's try that. So back to the problem. Here we are. We have our coefficient matrix our matrix of constants and our matrix of variables, just like we saw. And to solve the system for x and y, we just need to get our matrix of variables, okay? And we use this formula as we just said. So we need to find this inverse matrix A somehow. And since we're dealing with a two by two system, let's use our formula to find the inverse matrix. Okay, remember it's one over AD minus BC, okay, with those entries there. And what are A, B, C, and D? We look at our original matrix A, B, C, and D. And when we put these corresponding values in, we get this, 1 over A times D, 4 times 1, minus B times C, minus 2 times minus 3. And into the matrix, D is 1, B is negative 2, so negative B is plus 2, C is negative 3, so negative C is positive 3, and D is 1, Sorry, A is 4, so that goes down there. Now let's evaluate this. 1 over 4 times 1 is 4. We've got three negatives here, which means we're going to end up with a negative. Two threes are 6. 1, 2, 3, 4 inside the matrix. It's going to leave us with a minus a half at the front. 
one, two, three, four inside. Now we can actually do negative a half times all these entries to get our inverse matrix, but this a minus one is going to get multiplied to b. It's actually easier just to leave it like that. So now let's take a minus one and b and put them in the formula to find out what the matrix x is. Negative a half, I'm just going to leave that there for the moment. Let's do this matrix multiplication. One times two is two, minus eight. Two minus eight is minus six. Three times two is six, minus 16. Six minus 16 is minus 10, which gives us the matrix X is going to be negative a half times negative six is positive three. Negative a half times negative 10 is positive five. Okay, and that is actually our solution. Okay, the matrix X, remember that means X and Y. Okay, and equivalent matrices mean the equivalent entries, uh, the corresponding entries are equal, which means for our final solution, X equals 3 and Y equals 5 for our final solution here. So this does seem like quite an annoying and long process. We could just solve this quite quickly using elimination. If I take the first equation and divide everything by 2, I get 2x minus y equals 1. If I take the second equation and just copy it, minus 3x plus y equals negative 4. Add the 2, I get negative 1x. The y's are eliminated and minus 3. x equals positive 3. Taking x equals 3 and putting it into the second equation, that will give me negative 9 plus y equals negative 4. y is going to be negative 4 plus 9 y equals 5. That's much quicker. Why do we do this? I'm not sure. Maybe there are some computer applications. If you know, please drop a comment and let us know. So now let's try example 1b. We've got a 3 by 3 system here. Yuck. You knew this was coming. Okay, so we've got three equations with three unknowns here. So first, let's establish our matrices a, b, and x. So as before, remember our solution is going to be the matrix x is going to be the inverse matrix of a times the coefficient matrix B. And to solve that, I'm going to have to find out what all these are. Let's establish them all. Okay, so we've got our coefficient matrix A here, and our, our matrix of constants, and our matrix of variables X here. So we've got to find the inverse matrix of A in order to solve for the matrix of variables X, in other words, to find X, Y, and Z. So to find the solution, we're just going to do the inverse matrix of A times B, but we don't have a formula this time. To find the inverse matrix of A. So we're going to have to use the Gauss-Jordan elimination process, that long one. There it is set up, there's our augmented matrix, so let's get into it. So to start off here, we're going to get a leading one up here, so I'm just going to switch the first and second rows. Write the third row first because it's not going to change. So row 2 is going to go up into the top position, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0. And the first row is going to move down into the second row position, 3, 1, 1. 1, 0, 0. Okay, and there's our leading one up there. We now want to use that leading one to turn this into a zero. So let's write the first and third rows first because they're not going to change. So to turn this into a zero, I'm going to multiply the first row by minus 3 and add it to the second row. Negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2. Let's do it. Negative 3 times that plus that zero, what we were after. Negative 3 times that is negative 6 plus 1, negative 5. Negative 3 times that's negative 9 plus 1, negative 8. Negative 3 times that, 0 plus that, 1. Negative 3 times that, negative 3 plus the 0, just leaves negative 3. And multiples of 0 here, it's just going to be 0. Now we want a leading one here. So what I'm going to do is switch the second row and the third row. And I'm also going to multiply the third row through by negative 1. I think I can do that much. You don't want to do too many steps in one go, but I think this is okay. There's our first row done, because it's not changing. So, the second row, we're going to put negative 1 times the third row. Okay, so we're just going to copy this third row here into here and negate the numbers. 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, minus 1, okay? All multiplied by minus 1. And the second row is just going to copy straight down into the third position. 0, minus 5, minus 8. 1, negative 3, 0. And done. Running out of space here, so I'm just going to copy this bottom matrix and put it back up here and continue through the process. So next I'm going to use this leading one to turn that into a 0. So the first two rows are not going to change. There they are. 
Just remember, oh, we don't put equal signs. Remember, these two matrices are not equal. They are row equivalent. Okay, and always check each line. Make sure you've um, done each step. It's worth taking the five seconds to check each row as you go. So back to work here. I'm going to multiply the second row by five to add it to the third row to make that zero. So five times the second row plus the third row. Let's do it. Five times that plus that, just multiples of zero there. Five times that plus that. Zero what we want. Five times two is ten. Ten plus negative eight is two. Five times that is zero plus one is one. Five times that is zero plus negative three, negative three. Five times that is minus five plus zero minus five. So what are we going to do next? Right now you're thinking, oh, we just use that trick and avoid fractions, right? Uh, we cannot actually do that here. We cannot multiply by a negative a half without getting fractions. Sometimes uh, fractions are unavoidable when we're doing this. Okay, and in this, this is one of those cases. All we do here is we just don't do the fractions yet. We leave that to as late as we possibly can and do as much of the process as possible without getting fractions. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to forget about that. I'm going to come back up here, use this leading one, and turn that into a zero. So I'm going to multiply the second row by a negative 2, add it to the first row. Negative 2, R2, plus R1. That times negative 2, plus that, 1. That times negative 2, negative 2 plus 2, 0, what we're after. That times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. Multiples of 0 here. This times negative 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. This times negative 2 will be plus 2, plus 0 is 2. And here we are, now we have no choice but to turn that into our leading one and end up with a fraction. Yuck. So let's do it. We're going to multiply the third row by one half. Okay, so just halving everything. Zero, zero, one. A half, negative three over two, negative five over two. Best to leave them as improper fractions because we're going to be adding and multiplying this. So just leave them like that. I know to space again, so I'm going to copy this back up to the top and continue. So now we're finally getting close to reduced row echelon form. We're just going to use this leading one now to turn these into zeros. Last step. So to turn this into a zero, all I need to do is just add the third row to the first row. We're just going to do um, row three plus row one. Let's do it. That plus that, one. That plus that, zero. That plus that, zero. This is where it gets dice, you've got to be careful. Negative 3 over 2 plus 1 is negative a half. Negative 5 over 2 plus 2. Negative 5 over 2 plus 2. Okay, don't guess. If you need to do the working, do it. Negative 5 over 2 plus 4 over 2. Common denominator, negative 1 half. There we go. Okay, to get a 0 here, I'm going to multiply the third row by negative 2 and add it to the second row. Negative. 2 row 3 plus row 2. Let's do it. Multiples of 0 there, 0. Negative 2 times that is 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times that is negative 2 plus 2 is 0, what we wanted. Okay, so now we have our identity matrix on the left. Negative 2 times that is negative 1 plus 0 is minus 1. Negative 2 times that is plus 3 plus 0 is 3. Negative 2 times that plus that, oh god, negative 2 times negative 5 over 2 plus negative 1. I'm not going to guess, I've got to get this right. The negative and the 2 cancel, leaving 5, which is 4. And we are finally done. Okay, the Gauss Jordan elimination process is done, and this is on the left we have our identity matrix, and on the right we have our Inverse matrix. Yay! Actually, thinking back, was there another number in the matrix that could have been turned into a zero before we divided through by two? Go back and have a look. So from this result, we extract our inverse matrix and write it in a separate place over there, okay? Remember, if you're doing a quiz or a test, never erase your working like I'm doing here, okay? I'm doing it because I need the board space. Never erase your working, okay? So to solve this now, we just take our inverse matrix and multiply it to the matrix B to get our solution for x, y, and z. Okay, but since we're multiplying by fractions here, we have a matrix with fractions involved, that's going to be a bit of a nightmare. So what I'd like to do is factor something out of the matrix first, so that inside the matrix we're only going to have integers. 
Okay, and the multiplication process is much easier. So here I'm going to factor out one half, like so, and to get all the numbers inside, just multiply everything here by two. Multiply by two, uh, minus two, six, eight, and on the bottom here, one, negative three, negative five. Okay, just check, so negative half times all this gives that, looks good. So to do the multiplication, let's bring this matrix down for a negative one and matrix b up here. There we go, we're all set. We're just going to leave that half out there till the very end, which makes things a little easier. So we're going to do a half times, and here we're going to do a three by three matrix and a three by one matrix. These inside numbers match, so the order or the dimensions of the resulting matrix is going to be three by one down here. And let's do it. One times six is six plus 2 is 8, minus 2 is 6. Okay, second row, negative 2 times 6, negative 12, negative 12 again, negative 24, plus 16, so that's going to be negative 8. And third row, 1 times 6 is 6, plus 6 again is 12, minus 10, 2. If you like, you could have actually multiplied that half to the matrix B at the back here. Just change the order there, okay, the uh, commutative property. Okay, and to finish off here, let's just multiply everything in this matrix by a half, our scalar multiplication. 3, negative 4, and 1. And remember what we found here was the matrix X, which means it's made up of X, Y, and Z from our original set of equations. Okay, and finally this means, okay, these two matrices are equal, which means the corresponding entries are equal. Our final solution is x equals 3, y equals negative 4, z equals 1 for our final solution. Okay, using an inverse matrix to solve a 3x3 three three system of equations. Feeling confident? I hope so. It's now your turn. Please try example 2. For A, you've got a 2x2 two two system. Real quick, remember when you establish the coefficient matrix, you can use the formula to get the inverse matrix. Part B though is a three by three system. You've got to go through that Gauss-Jordan elimination to find the inverse matrix for the coefficient matrix. Good luck. Remember to share your answers in the comments. Also, you can even write in your inverse matrices as well if you feel like it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.